Welcome to Craig's Gun Channel. In today's video, we're going to cover the High Point C9. High Point Firearms is an Ohio-based manufacturer of cost-effective pistols and carbines. The company originated from the mind of Thomas Deeb, who in the late 1980s saw a need for a truly affordable yet functional gun option for the shooting community. Up to that point, firearms came in generally two flavors. Good quality, reliable firearms with correspondingly high prices, or low-cost, questionable quality firearms which may work but generally could not be relied upon. He felt it was possible to produce a reliable firearm that was still affordable, so he worked to make that a reality. In 1988, he created B. Miller Distributing to be the distributor of the firearms that would be created and teamed up with Mike Strassel, an aspiring machinist, and Ed Stallard, a close friend, to create Maverick Arms to produce the firearms with operations initially conducted in a two-car garage owned by Stallard. The first prototype was a simple, functional, blowback-operated semi-automatic pistol in 9mm. The first versions had steel frames, and with the heavy slides required for safe blowback operation, came in at over 41 ounces. They're 7.75 inches long with a barrel length of 4 and a quarter inches and had a 9-round magazine held in place with a heel release. Sights were fixed, and they had a military-style parkerized finish. Initially marketed as the Maverick JS9, they produced around 6,000 or so before Mossberg's Maverick caught wind of the name and issued a cease and desist, resulting in a name change for the company to Stallard Arms, with the pistol being renamed the Stallard JS9. In 1993, a slightly shorter and more compact version of the JS9 was developed called the JS9 Compact. It had a barrel length of three and a half inches long, and with its alloy frame weighed in at 32 ounces. In 1994, injection molded polymer frames began to be used, which dropped the weight to 29 ounces fully loaded. A slight redesign in 2000 resulted in the C9 pistol we commonly see today. This also marked the year that production of the full-sized JS series pistol ceased. Affordability has always been the primary hallmark of the High Point C9. By the end of the 1990s, the suggested full retail price for the C9 was still under $125, and by the end of 2010, it only increased to about $165. Today, they have a full suggested retail price just under $200, and of course, street prices are even less. In doing a quick review online, I found current prices ranging from a low of around $159.95 to an average around $170. Realistically speaking, this makes them the most affordable 9mm pistol option available for a new firearm. So what does that money get you? Actually, quite a lot. The current C9 is a mid-sized semi-automatic pistol that comes in at 6.75 inches long overall, 5 inches high, and 1 and a quarter inch wide with a 3.5 inch barrel. The frame is high-impact polymer with matching polymer grips. The metal slide has 3-dot adjustable sights with an optional rear peep aperture sight available the front being cast integral with the slide, and the rear being made of polymer. The pistol features a last round slide hold open, manual slide hold open, thumb safety, magazine disconnect safety, as well as not just one, but two drop safeties. It utilizes a single stack magazine that holds eight rounds, with optional 10 round magazines available. All controls, including the magazine release, slide lock, and safety, are on the left side only, while the slide will lock back after the last round is fired, there is no manual release lever requiring you to pull the slide back and release, a la the slingshot method, after you insert a fresh magazine. Now the not so good things. The fire control system utilizes stamped sheet steel components and plastics where possible, such as the plastic trigger itself, which operates in a pivot style versus a direct pullback. When you pull the trigger, the rearward motion is directed to the transfer bar, a stamped metal part which also doubles as the disconnector, causing it to push against the sear cam, another stamped piece. This transfers the rearward motion around its pivot pin which in turn pulls the sear down against its spring, finally releasing the striker. That's a lot of transfer of movement amongst several different parts resulting in a lot of friction and flex amongst all of those pieces. The result is a kind of mushy trigger that has a long and heavy inconsistent trigger pull with an ambiguous reset. Trigger pull weights of over 10 pounds are not uncommon, but after you shoot a few hundred rounds, they usually settle in around 7 to 8 pounds. Once you pull the trigger, the striker will release, firing it. There is no locking system to control the extraction process. 
It uses instead the much simpler blowback method of operation. Most pistols that utilize this method rely on a heavy slide and very strong recoil springs, making slide manipulation oftentimes very difficult. High Point went a different direction and instead opted to make the slide an even heavier and beefy piece. This allows for lighter recoil springs to be used, making it a bit easier to rack the slide. The downside of all this is that the overall weight, due to that extra heavy slide, comes in at 29 ounces when fully loaded. Also that weight's focused on the slide on top of the gun, giving it an odd balance. And make no mistake, this is heavy for a pistol in its size class. Its simple design has remained essentially unchanged for over 20 years, utilizing injection molded polymer frames and slides made of cast zamic, a zinc-based alloy, both of which are very cost-effective materials. At one time, the use of plastics in firearms was considered substandard. However, advances in polymers have made its use in pistol frames almost the preferred. Zamic, on the other hand, can still be a potential problem. This material has been used to manufacture complex metal parts for years now. It's easy to cast and requires very little finishing to get it to its final shape. However, it's not known for being particularly strong, especially when compared to the steels usually used in making firearms. In fact, I've reviewed several guns over the past few years that have used this material and made note of the fact it's generally the weak link in their design, often making them unsafe. However, like any material, it depends on the specific design and how it's being used. High Point uses the more is better approach. The slide, while made of Zamic, is a heavy, blocky piece that uses a lot of the material in its design. This not only gives the gun its distinctive appearance and provides the weight needed for reliable operation, but also makes the material safe to use. Hardened steel is cast into place within the slide in key critical areas that require the additional durability. All of this combines to make a pistol that has a reputation for being nearly indestructible, and it's also the reason that it's rated for plus P ammunition a rarity for blowback operated pistols. While the design has not changed much since it was originally introduced, the cosmetic appearance certainly has. When the C9 was originally offered, it was available in essentially black. There was some early variations in the texture, either a smooth finish or a textured finish, but still black. Since then, optional finishes were offered, a limited number and nickel finish were produced, and starting in 2015, hydro dipped finish options became available. Now you can get your C9 in colors ranging from basic black to an ever-expanding variety of camo patterns. There was even a $100 bill finish offered for a limited time. While these pistols continue to sell very well, a lot has changed since they were originally designed over 20 years ago. Most modern handguns are adopting mounting rails for light and laser systems, and even optics, and double-stack magazine designs make the high point single-stack, eight-round capacity seem a bit outdated, and it's a common complaint. In 2019, High Point announced a new redesign at SHOT Show with its prototype on display. This prototype, since named the YC9, addresses most of these issues, having a double stack magazine design, threaded barrel options, rail mounting options, and even a more modern overall look, all while maintaining a cost conscious price point. Originally slated to be available by the end of 2019, it's now been pushed to 2020 and then to 2021, and even as of the date of this filming has still not been released. Until then, the tried and true C9 continues to lead the way for cost-effective handgun offerings. I hope that this information is of value, and if you liked the video, I would ask that you hit the like button and subscribe if you want to continue to see more like this. I value your comments and feedback, and as always, until next week, stay safe.